Ever hear that the most attractive men have bad personalities? Maybe you've had that experience yourself when dating. Or maybe you've just grown to believe this to be true. Well, the good news is that this relationship between attractiveness and personality traits doesn't actually exist. But the bad news is that all the data you have might tell you that it does. How can that be? How can your view of the world be so inconsistent with reality? Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, we're going to talk about something called the Berkson's Paradox, which will explain why you might completely believe that the most attractive men have bad personalities, even when in reality that's just not true. Beyond that, we'll talk about how looking at relationships between any two variables can lead to very incorrect conclusions in some very specific cases. And to start, let's talk about correlations. This is a topic I cover in detail in a different video that I'll link to below, but the idea is that we can measure how related two variables are. If something is positively correlated, that implies that as one variable increases in value, the other one does as well. For example, the more that people study for an exam, the better those people actually do on the exam. We tend to depict that relationship in a graph like this. It's not a perfect relationship, but in general, studying does correlate with exam outcomes. You can also have negative correlations, where as one variable increases, another variable tends to decrease. For example, the more that golfers practice playing golf, the lower score they tend to get. We tend to depict that relationship on a graph like this. Again, that relationship is not always true, but generally practicing in golf does lead to lower scores, and as a reminder, in golf, lower scores are better. Finally, you can also have a situation with absolutely no correlation, where variables are totally independent. For example, the number of miles someone drives per year really has nothing to do with the number of penguin babies in Antarctica and a lack of correlation would actually look something like this. So what does this have to do with attractiveness and personality of men? Let's start with a really simple assumption that there is no relationship between how attractive someone is and how personable they are. You can have unattractive jerks or very attractive gentlemen. If we plot that lack of relationship or lack of correlation, it would look something like this. And it turns out, if you actually look at the data in the real world, this is pretty close to reality. So why do so many people think that there is actually a negative correlation, a negative relationship between attractiveness and personality? Well, it all has to do with the fact that the sample of men that people are exposed to, especially while dating, isn't randomly picked from the entire population of men. Instead, people tend to use very specific rules when deciding who to date. And the simplest rule is something like this. I won't date someone who is both too unattractive and too much of a jerk. On this graph, we can depict that rule like this. If someone falls below some threshold of attractiveness, they aren't even considered for dating. People might date someone who is reasonably unattractive and have an awesome personality, or they can be super attractive but have a pretty bad personality. And clearly, people would love to date someone who is both attractive and has a great personality. On the other hand, people are pretty reluctant to date someone who is both unattractive and has a bad personality. If that's the case, then the dates that someone goes on are limited to men who fall in this range. What that means is that if we look at the relationship between attractiveness and personality of men within those men who are getting dates, there actually is a negative relationship. The more attractive, the more of a jerk. But in reality, across all men, that relationship just doesn't exist at all. In other words, the reason that so many people believe that the relationship between attractiveness and personality exists is because they are looking only at part of the population of all men. And this error in statistical reasoning, the Berkson's paradox, isn't limited to just evaluations of men. But before we get to that, if you could take a minute to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content I put out, I would really appreciate it. With that said, let's look at a couple more examples of the Berkson's paradox. One classic example is the relationship between SAT scores and grade point averages of incoming college students. In reality, those two variables are very positively correlated. Someone who has a high GPA is also very likely to have a high SAT score. But within a particular college, it's very possible, it's even likely, that the relationship is negative. Let's see how that can be true. A college likely has a rule that says you need to have at least some minimum SAT score and some minimum GPA to get in. So that would take out the bottom part of this graph. And if you have a super high GPA and SAT score, well, you're probably getting into an even better college. So that takes out the top part of this graph. What's left are the students who both got accepted and enrolled at any given college. 
And for those students, as you can see here, the relationship between GPA and SAT score is actually negative. Again, in reality, those two variables are very highly positively related. But when you look at the students in any one college, we're going to find a negative relationship. And that negative relationship completely masks the reality of how these two variables are actually correlated. Here's just one more example that hits a bit close to home. As a university professor, I often hear that the better a researcher you are, the worse a teacher you are. I'm sure we can all think of the one completely brilliant professor we had who just couldn't hold the attention of anyone in class. And yet the exact same logic as before explains why this relationship, even if it does exist, is likely very much exaggerated. In fact, let's assume for a second that this relationship does exist, but it's pretty weak. It might look something like this. The better a professor is as a researcher, the worse they are as a teacher, but only ever so slightly. More realistically, that relationship is small enough not to really matter much at all. But if we think about who might get hired by university, we see the same basic story play out. If a professor is both a mediocre teacher and a mediocre researcher, they're unlikely to be hired at all. And if a professor is a rockstar researcher and rockstar teacher, then they're getting hired by the most elite universities in the world. Which leaves this group of professors. And within this group, there is a pretty strong negative relationship between research ability and teaching ability. Again, it's not that this relationship exists overall, it's just that the selection rules used by universities make it seem like the relationship is much bigger than it is in reality. The point of all this is to say that when you look at relationships between variables in any context, you have to be hyper aware of whether you're looking at all the data that exists or just a subset of the data. And for the Berkson's paradox in particular, you have to be aware if the rule used to include or exclude data relies on both variables simultaneously as in the cases of men, grades, and professors. There are countless other examples of this paradox, and I'd love to hear about them from you. What other cases are there of data hiding reality in this way? Leave a comment below and I'll do my best to keep the conversation going. Finally, as always, thanks so much for watching.